حجیت حسوتی حق استی قهیو ختمی خونا خوی یکی هست تند تان حسوی حسیکو حس چاکو خنکیان یه یا اختند تان این تو نخ هست شی حشی تو نخ یکنده دین آقا هست یو ختمی هتو نخ ایا کو نخ یکنده دین سو یا سی دیا دو خدا خیا تینگ دیو ختمی شتگاه تو تو خاص ویت سو شاداخ تاوق قدی اختکیش قاکونا خوی خشتین هست یه جنی خوای نق خیخ نی وی ها اچ وی کونا هست وی از خان هر سنج دیو ختمی، اقاشی تهیم یا جشگونی یا هجیم، هر سنج دیو ختمی است و از تو این خنخشت و خدتی از وی هستی دچخان کی این خنخ هست او سخن خنخ وی هست او سکو تخ خنخ تین خایتی هیو ختمی خا حقوستی یه جنی تو نخیا هر سنج دیو ختمی که گشت زین کیو هانسو که گشت زین خنخ وی اخت واسگو اچ وی وش کنخ و تو آدی هر سنج دیو ختمی ختمی دان چاو یاد تکات خان سنج دیو ختمی گاو یک پدی خاکونخ یکی هشت تو آشگو یکتی یک شکت تو نخت کتایو ختمی یکیش نارخ ها این کاونی اچوین تو هیدی شگفت دان یا یا خوشگی دکه دچی خن انقاس کودکی اقایق قطی و یا خوز که دکه کنگت ات وسخو کنختی نخایتی یا کنگیستی خیدا خیاتا یا نز اخ یا خیل حسیل کو حس آنی کنخ یا نز اخ کنگت ات وسخو کنگت یو غتنگی خاکه هی نقد تو آخرین کارونیک یک سنجت آنی که قشر وید تو آخر یا از یا خرتی یا از قیقی تو نخوی یا اخچا آقا هست اوشی و از قانی هست اوشی تو نخوی تو آت سوت سنجت آت وسکو خنخوی هشت از وی خوک دخیا خنخ استکات ات تو یه یتی یک قهی کو خات استکات ات دخیا هستند یوغ تندی شد از تو خنخ ات تو یک یه خان استکات یوغ شکوا یه خان Pusca syukwa. Syukwa yata. Wasa siyit ni setakat. Okay, okay? Okay. Okay. Syukwa ni. Syukwa ni. Ni dat qa waydu. Hakani yan ka hakun ki yan. Shkeki Yekei kuna khekhsetini Ya microphone gaiji wu Kuna khatu wa suku satu wa akhi
Elki sato ach, ich passa kopfati. Ja, computer Okay. 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 Das ist was aya Johanna ya just just iwa ach elfwasa yituwu ina ya konach iwa ach chatling kidiyo katangi aka ya aka wu konach yekwati kesbusti chatling kidiyo katangi aka konach tine khayati chatling kidiyo katangi gawu ich <laughs> Ja, Shadak, I dach, I ya to the two. Hop Tacha, Ha ichtek ich, ichtek ich, Reda, Ha ach gug. Ha, which gay? Naskia. A ka, say de ya, Reda, Naskia, ja, Akku jenny die Dutch Katnik, Kutzi at Kusakau. Ha, Anachsen. Sit Kuna Kiji Dutch Katnik. Aka Kedush Katnika ja, und Hunde tu. Kuna Kawei. A dot. Alaska Native Language Archive by Yaya Duwasa. Recordings of Yahaji Haji Wutsu, University of Alaska Southeast. We library took a ya yet the cut yet talk Kunach the Kashuk Takayi Tunach Kukwati Kukwat Jet. What's Kukwas the name? Way recordings. Kayata Alaska Native Language Archive. Yeah, UAF University of Alaska Fairbanks. Fairbanks, yeah, yeah, tea. It's the cut has 
شدهینی ات هستی چی یا هستی یک نی ادخ سیده یا آیا سکختو آخ سکختو آخ شخوا یا یا تا آیا فایر فاکس یه دو ساک فایر فاکس یا فایر فاکس این یا تا آیا خیتی تای کاخی نخ سیف لینک از اقا ویل تکت ریکوردین سا یای اکشوک تقیی توخ یک پتی خاد تکت ویب آی فونز خاد واکمنز خاد چادا سا توخ یک پتی سو اقا تکت یه دی تکت یه دی آیا که گختو آت یکشن که دیو خطنگی یک پتی ها این ขากวัดเดียร์ซีดีขัดเทปขัดอัดขัดจีวุฒิขัดอัดยีดัดยาเวดีดูดูเล็กค่าอ่าซายอลิซาเบธไนมันขวัสกุตเซอิซาคุเ
We'll sort of move in and out, and we'll have a lot of texts that will help us to stay in Clinket. So, you know. How are you guys reading these stories? Physically, what's your process for reading it, and how's it going? Uh, uh, what to just play Shkashnik, but it took us to uh, play Kashu Awa uh, just for the one, the yeah. one talk, talk story. So you got to oh, really yeah. allocate your time to, to navigate these stories because ideally you guys would come in and at least have read all of the English. So that you know what we're getting for. So it might be a strategy to read them all in English and then to come back through and start working through. I mean, the, the, the best of all worlds, you would probably read it in English, then read the entire thing out loud and clink it, and then spend some time moving back and forth, highlighting some sentences that you think are interesting or some things that, that might be really neat. Um, and then the sort of then you got some tools that we can navigate around so that when we come into class on Friday nights, we'll, we'll do some things and clink it. And we'll always do lessons every night. Uh, but part of my goal is to just talk for a little while and clink it, and then to move straight into the stories and read them through all the way through and, and think it. And if you know what's coming in English, sometimes it helps you put the pieces together until we're at the point where you know, someday we don't need the English. But storytelling is really important. When I was visiting with different speakers this summer, there were times when there was a, three of us just sitting there, and these two elders turned to me and they're like, Cook, tell us, tell us a story. You know, and so and it's kind of fun to to hear stories uh, in English and say that would be fun to tell and clink it. And you know and and sometimes when you're first doing these types of things, you really stumble around with your language, and that's just fine. But then uh, that's the reason why these recordings were made, so that we would study them, that we would become speakers by studying them. So there's a lot of work we've got to do now, and then visit with fluent speakers more. Uh, there's lots of stories that we can work on transcribing sort of as a group as well. Uh, and maybe just sort of take a look at our final assignment and figure out, I just think we should just try and see how many things we could transcribe, uh, whether we're doing them together, and then you guys are taking chunks and working in maybe groups or small, you know, small teams or a big team or however we want to tackle it. But there's lots of stories. There's very short, funny ones by Sam Johnston. There's this narrative of uh, Mary Anderson, and we're going to read this entire text, which was Jeff Lear and her mother, uh, Elizabeth Ninth. And for me, it was like, so I was reading this text last night, and then I thought, I don't think I've ever heard Elizabeth Ninth. And so I, I looked through the archive because I knew that that stuff has been, they've been digitizing it and putting it online. And so I just started listening to it and then was downloading them today. And as I listened, I thought it sounded exactly like. Her daughter, which makes sense. Well, I thought that was who we were listening to was Mary Anderson uh -huh. at first, and yeah. they sound exactly alike. Exactly, yeah. That's so it was cool. really neat to listen to her mom. Uh, so it's really fun because these connections are still there. 
So it would be neat to translate what her daughter is saying and see what kind of similarities there might be between this text. What else? What else is on your mind? I think it's important, though. I've tried to do it you know, both ways. Like, I start off trying to read the kid. And we'll go ahead and go through like a page and I'll go through, what am I picking out of this? And I thought, okay, I found a few words that, okay, I think this is kind of what they're talking about, but I was really kind of lost. Then when I go over here and read this part of it, then it would, I'd say, okay, now I can I read over it again. It's just like this process. And it's like, okay, then, oh, that's what that means. And I find that it's, for me, at this point, I'm hoping by the end I'll be able to read this and have a really good idea of what's going on here. But for right now, it's really nice for me to be able to read the story and kind of get a feeling, kind of the spirit of what the story is. Mm -hmm. So when you're actually, when we're actually reading it in here, you know, and, and you're inflecting your voice, you know, and, oh yeah, I know what he's talking about, you know, and not having to read what's going on here, you know, it's just, well, yeah, that's what. It, and then that phrase will like catch, and I was trying to do that, you know, by myself, you know, but. You know, today being with May and Stephanie was was a lot easier, you know. So it's nice kind of being in the group. Yeah, and then I would say uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm lucky because when I went up there, they gave me another copy of this, and I can just write all over this thing. But you know, use a highlighter, use a pencil, uh, and I would just sort of start finding things that you think that you can, you know. And maybe you've got two different colors. One color are just things that you recognize. Oh, I know that word. I know that word. I know that word. Another thing might be things that you want to challenge yourself to learn, right? Because for the language learner, you have to always be pushing yourself to see how far you can go. And then there might be other things you circle and you say, I just want to know how that works. I have no idea. I want to know how that works. Uh, just going through, uh, let me get over here. Your orthography was very confusing for me. Very and I hope you can get into that and why, we're, why we have two different things. And what direction you think the language may be going. I don't know, maybe we're going to be going to this, and it's like, I'm kind of thinking, I was telling those guys today, it's like, if in five years or something, you know, this is my feeling, if in five years we say, oh, we're getting rid, rid of this older orthography and going to revise, are you going to have a student recall and get everyone back in and say, okay, here we go. Everything from here on out is going to be like this. We're not going to this. Okay, well, there we go. Yeah, it's more about we know. Okay. Uh, the, the history behind it, and I, I respect everybody who works in the language. I, I think there's a tremendous amount of difficulty when we're looking at multiple orthographies. A couple of the problems. Uh, Jeff Lear and John Ritter and others felt that there was some inconsistency in the way that Clinkett is written. Part of the problem was there weren't... Uh, the type of characters we have now, where you can just enter something and there's an underlying G built onto it. So as people would share files or copy and paste information, if you lost your formatting at any time, you would lose all of your underlines. And that would be very problematic for a lot of texts. They used to do these things by hand on typewriters and then just underline characters. Sometimes they do it with a pen. So the underlines were presenting a problem. In addition, some people felt that the vowel system was not consistent because vowels operate in pairs, right? They're, they're actually sort of, they operate in these sort of groups of four. Mm -hmm. High tone, low tone, long and short. So A goes to double A, as I goes to double E, as E goes to EI, as U goes to OO. The concern, I think, that they had was that it wasn't going to make sense to be going to completely different letters at some time, I to EE. -E. Although, really, what we're doing is we're spelling it in ways it would sound in English, with the exception of EI. So then this new writing system was proposed. And the way I heard the story is there was a meeting in Ketchikan many years ago, and this idea was proposed, and everybody voted it down. So they went and did it anyway. Uh, and so this is the system that's used currently in Teslin. Uh, not necessarily, it was used in Atlin, it was used in Carcross. But what I see them doing nowadays is coastal writing. And, and unfortunately, it's also become this coastal versus inland writing system. 
So I was going to go up and teach in Canada this year, and, and some of the feedback I was getting was, well, he's one of those, he writes in that coastal way. So like he's somehow different than we are. And so it was interesting that there's this sort of artificial barrier, because that's not even a, a clinket thing. And, you know, it was invented by uh, linguists who are tremendously helpful, but have in this situation created more of a, a barrier than a tool in a lot of ways. So the Yukon Native Language Center is producing a lot of material, and they're utilizing uh, this different orthography. All the material on the coast currently is using the current orthography. So one of the things that we ultimately have is if this is the situation we have, and you don't want to go into communities and tell them what to do, uh, then we, we just deal with both. And then for our learners, we just say, most of your materials are going to be in this, but this is what you need to, to be ready for and encounter. And so we've got this little decoder chart um, the, the biggest difference is marking long vowels. And I'm a fan of the coastal, the way that it's done on the coast, because one of the big problems I think you have is, is there's things that are just hard, hard to pronounce. Like, uh, we did this the other day. Um, yeah, we'll do them. Do them on. Oops. So here's a couple of things that are hard to pronounce. And some of you have already had a chance to do this. I found another word that might be good for this. Oh, did you? I wrote it down to cover my time, but it was so awesome. You're cruel. Those pinched eggs. <laughs> High tone, double A, pinched T, pinched K, I A, P S, pinched K, U. Eskimo? Was it the pinch after the K or the S? Uh, at, the, at the end. There might have. This is probably, probably that. I think, yeah, I think the S is without pinch. It's cool. That was pretty good. Oh, no, we might as well. Uh, it's T S pinched K U. Yeah. He's got a pinch up in All right. So let's. Uh, well, first of all, do we know what these things are? Little one and the cute little fish child. <laughs> yeah, the middle one's little rockfish, little red snapper. It's the top one. Swan, swan, swans, plural swans. And what's the bottom one? I haven't seen the bottom. One. I could guess what it is. I think it's like. In here, I think it's small islands. Yeah, it's little islands. Kut is island, and Kutsu means sort of a middle size, mid sized child. But what we remember with Klinket is Yeti or Kutsu. It derives from child, but it could also mean a small thing. So, like, Kut Yeti could be a really little island, and a Kut Kutsu might be just kind of a little island. It's on its way to being big and full grown. Ready to have its own Yeti island. What's island that? Yeti. <laughs> yeah, well, not yet. <laughs> no cuts. Hello. I've seen it used for the bud of a plant, too. Oh, that's cool. Judy to be a Wow. Oh, really? Teeny tiny buds. Yummy cuts over. So let's give a shot. The first one. Costine, um, we were discussing in class the other day that 
is the new form of beatboxing. Can get beatboxing. Making that. So yeah, you get these repeated consonants, which you'll see in the second one. So, because you're going round and unrounded. And you're not voicing, it stays unvoiced. It was really neat. I thought maybe it would voice. I went up to Haynes and I had just been doing some work and I was going to run some tests with some speakers and see if, if because sometimes that W becomes a U. Like, it becomes a U at times. But I was trying to figure it out. And it makes sense that it wouldn't because that's not a voice consonant. And then the other one? Last one. Right. Those of you online, if you have any questions, just jump on it. So what's fascinating about continuing to study these texts and, and why you should really come in and pay close attention to the clinket, which you know, maybe a good strategy is to read it all in English so that you've got sort of a continual narrative in mind. And then to come through and maybe do some back and forth stuff where you're really paying close attention to the language. The other thing you might highlight is words that you want to sort of, you want to learn that word. Like here's, these were, um, the top two, I'd actually been, well, actually the middle one, I've been trying to find out for quite a while. And this is maybe one way to say it. So, like, a a would be its hooves, uh, which is different than what's in the dictionary. So it's really neat to sort of compare these different ways of saying it. And is that <laughs> some different part of the hoof, maybe? And kikatskiat. It's thorns. I've been asking for a long time about thorns. It's really cool to get that one. How do you say this? Kikatskiat. 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 <laughs> I'm saying it really fast. And the bottom one is she was talking about some type of king salmon uh, that they would catch. Hin tak shasesi. But I couldn't find that verb anymore. So that that might be sort of an undocumented verb. So that's why these verbs are these words are so fun to goof around with. We see sort of how they're put together. So. When clinket compound words are formed, a lot of times what happens is words tend to contract and they also flatten their tone. So that's heen, H high toned E, E N. Talk is in, so in the water, in some sort of container near the bottom. And then tsetsi would be the verb. So would that be like a kokanee salmon, like a landlocked one that does not taste salt water? I'm not exactly sure. They say it's, they're smaller than the interior, they call them kokanee. Yeah, she said it was like a small king salmon. So yeah, it must be. So and, and that's the other neat thing is matching up these different terms for these different animals and other things now with the clinket ones. And so the other thing is, is one of the rules that we one of the suggestions or maybe theories about nouns is if it's really short, then that's some sort of, that's probably an animal that was there when Clinkets first got here. Ye, cha, kuts, ski, one syllable word. If they're longer than that, then oftentimes, especially if they're getting three, four syllables, then they're usually what we call like a manufactured word. Like that's something in the water. Hintakudzi, and sometimes it's just hintakudzi, brown bear in the water, but sometimes it's, there's some verb that's also attached in there as well. So it's really neat to sort of unpack that kind of stuff and think about how our ancestors would think about these different animals. So, any other questions, thoughts? Is that 
Is that really a landlocked salmon? Is the salmon species that stays in Syria? I'm not too sure about this. Out? I don't know what's my well, question. They have, they have in, like, in the Great Lakes area and some other places, we'll have salmon that will go out to like, Lake Michigan, Lake Superior, they'll actually come and spawn back in the freshwater streams, but they never go out to the ocean. Oh, so they're uh, landlocked. They're landlocked. King, King uh, salmon. They have okay. landlocked uh, coho. Uh -huh. I can't imagine being a little. Yeah, they I would be so depressed. <laughs> <laughs> Swim around. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> catch me. Who breeds these? It used to be a brown bear um, genetically, it was. Interesting. It went. It got separated in the ice. Uh -huh. And during the ice ages, there was a separation, and the, the brown bear that stayed warm, it turned white because of the ice used for survival. Hmm. So when wow. I learned the name, I thought, oh, that makes sense. It's the brown bear that swims under the water. Wow. And that's where they live. Their habitat is in largely underwater to eat. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you guys heard of Yatsine, Yatsine, Isikuge Yatsine, that's a, an inland grizzly bear, they're, they're bigger than the bears that we have here that we call hoots, and it's mostly what I see is the inland folks, but some of the older, old time Quinkets would use that term too, and it means the thing that's alive, Yatsine, the living thing. So it's kind of interesting too because in Koyukon they have a word for brown bear but they don't use it because they don't they got such respect for bears apparently that they just say that brown thing that's over there right and that's how they would refer to it so I don't know if those are related or not or if it's just you know because then it gets this distinct name so these are neat things to look at as we're sort of going through uh, so let's. Look at a couple sentences on this. Not how to do this one. So something I was doing was uh, making some slides to sort of examine how some of these sentences function. Well, I'm going to take a look at a few of these, but then I have to get to something else. <laughs> yeah, just Camera like was not on for that magical. Okay. So there's a couple things. I want to point out, and as you know, you're looking at advanced clinket and you're trying to sort of digest all these different components of the clinket language. There's just a couple of sort of things that we can figure out. One is just coming to some agreement on basic terminology, which you know, there's a there's a bunch of different ways we could look at it. Uh, Eggleston might look at it differently from Lear, might look at it differently from Crippen, might look at it differently from Dauenhauer. But you know, as long as we can sort of understand the basic notions of what's going on. So when we look at clinket grammar, I mean, we isolate it into verb phrases and all this other stuff, right? Because the other stuff is relatively easy to figure out. There's a lot of, an awful lot of words. Sometimes there's undocumented words. Sometimes there's manufactured words. But those are, I think, easier to figure out than getting into the, the meat of actual verbs. But then that doesn't mean we're going to ignore the verbs. We're actually going to now, we're going to figure out how the verbs function. And the verb, for me, breaks down into a number of different, there's really just these components in my mind. There's the pre-verb, the prefix, stem, suffix, and the post-verb. So when we talk about pre-verb, it's any set of words that come before the verb and affect the verb. They, they have to be considered part of that actual meaning of the verb. Right, and so we'll look at some of these different things and we'll start to get more familiar with them. And then you've got the prefix. The prefix means it's attached to the verb itself. It means it affects it and it, it creates contraction, it creates morphology. It's where things get kind of funky, like, you know, uh, and then you've got the stem. And the stem, Oops, I got that in the wrong spot. Too. The stem is made up of the classifier and the root. Classifier and the root, and also what we call stem variation. 
stem variation means it's going to be short and high, long and high, or long and low. It'll be one of those three. And there's, you know, there's a set of rules to stem variation and how it functions. And we'll take a look at some of those things probably later in the semester. Uh, although if you're curious now, you can read uh, Carrie Eggleston's thesis. It lays it out pretty well. And Crippen talks about it pretty well in, uh, in his Clinkatology lecture. Uh, both of those things they've shared with us. Uh, you can get them through their website or clinkit.info under resources. So then you've got the suffix. And so prefix, stem, and suffix is the actual verb itself. It's a word. It's one component. And then you've got post-verb stuff, which are any words that come after that also affect that specific verb phrase. So if we look at this, one of the things, I meant to bring a couple other examples, but it, we'll start at the tail end of this word, ye. You're going to see that quite a bit in oratory, and you're going to actually see it a lot in speech. And there's a number of different ways that this could function. If you had the verb itself, and you had ku wanugu ye, ku wanugu would mean to to behave, to, to be a certain way. Kuwanugu yet on its own would mean the place that somebody behaved. Right? So if it's some verb with a, a, what we call like a relative suffix and then the word yet after it. So you could say atwugu di ye. Or maybe ye atwugu di ye. The place where Raven walked around. So if you, as you study place names, we've got this handout of place names, you're going to see yet at the end of a lot of them. And it really just means the place where something happens. If there's a verb by itself, followed by yet, the place that it happened. But then it sort of it can go through changes. If we were to say, adeku wanugu ye, now because ade pops up in the pre-verb, that changes the way that ye functions in the post-verb. Now ye means the way, right? And so you would say, the way that he was behaving, right? So now we're talking about some specific manner that somebody's doing something. The way that Raven was walking around over there. So now when you see ade and ye, you're looking at both sides of the verb as soon as you hear that ade. And you're just trying to figure out if that's coming. Because it can be confusing because you could say ade wugu. He went, he went towards it. right? And you're going to hear this in all kinds of things. Ade ye right? And you're going to see ade all over the place. And it literally just means toward it. But with Clink it, we see that when things start grouping up, they get a collective meaning, which overrides the individual meaning. So it's good to break things down into components, but then you just got to learn all these different groups and sets and pairs that create different meanings. So the third way that ye functions is kesh ade, a verb with that suffix ye. And there's a couple different ways that this can function. And this is what one of the giants was saying. There's no way I'm going to begin to move off of it. Right? And so he's saying, I'm not going to do it. And so in some ways, it's saying it's not going to happen. But in a lot of other ways, it would translate as there's no way it can happen. Right? So kesh a day and then ye at the end. And it's a, it's a really interesting construction in Clinton. And it's something that you're going to encounter in oratory. But as far as helping you to be able to translate Clinton and know what you're looking at and eventually what you're hearing, it's good to know how these things function. You all right? So one of the things that we do is we learn how to sort of break these into components so that our brain can get convinced that that's what these things are. And then as you start to encounter them more and start to hear them, they just become more familiar. Now the goal is eventually to replace all of these tools and all of these other things with actual just plink of thought. But I think you need lots of steps to help you to get there, because uh, it's a big, huge chunk of stuff that all comes at you.
So one of the things is looking at the top as opposed to the middle. In the middle, it's breaking it down so you can see the components. This is, a real, this is just a noun. This is a suffix, noun, suffix. And this is a particle, its beginning. This is the verb itself. And then these combine to become sort of, they just alter the verb itself. So this was another one that I thought was pretty fun. And she kept saying it like he's the one who would be decapitated in the battle of the, the giants. Which was awesome. I mean, this is all stuff that's just a little bit south of us where these stories are taking place. And uh, ideally, we'd spend a semester studying this book and then we'd just go walk from here to Adam and just sort of <laughs> revisit this and just spend that whole time in Lincoln. So maybe someday we'll have classes like that. It'll just it'll be epic. So one of the things is recognizing also these prefix combinations that signal what form we're in. It's a gach, you know, gach often means like the future form. You're going to see it a lot. Gach du, gach tu. Um, you'll also see kuk, kwa. Uh, there'll be a number of different forms and prefixes that you'll see. We'll share some of the prefix combination charts and talking about, we'll talk about how to recognize them. And the other thing we'll talk about is what are the components that are inside that particular prefix that create these different combinations. And those are getting, you know, that's pretty technical type of clinking. And again, I think you study those components until you can just recognize and you know which form it is. And then eventually you know which form to use when you're going to do that in the future. Like if you say, we're going to go to the store. You know? And so one of the things that you're seeing is sa uh, is, it's a thematic prefix is what we call it and it refers to either the voice or the neck. Uh, it's something, it's this, you know, it comes from a body part, which is this spot right here where your neck meets your chest. That's your sa, ach sa, ach sa, ach sa. That's why you have a seid if you wear a necklace. It's sa at seid, the thing on sa, right? And you're going to see words for scarf and bib and things, and they're going to have sa in it where it'll come out as seid sometimes. And this is why you'd say, ah, I hear you, right? Because it's also related to voice. So it's related to voice, the throat, and this thing right here. So in this case, we have sa, and then you have du, which would be the indefinite human. Uh, some, it's, someone is doing it, it happens, is basically how it translates to And then you've got shtik, to break something. So you've got it's going to be broken at the neck. It's basically what I would think. And that's to be decapitated. So now you can talk about somebody's, you know, and you could say, um, I guess you say, I'm going to decapitate it. You can say, we're going, we are going to decapitate it. If you want to. <laughs> uh, so let's look at a couple more, and then we'll just read some stories to see how it goes. Uh, here's another one, and I, I, I highlighted a bunch of these to sort of to look at. So this is uh, nominalizing a verb, turning a verb into really an adjective, right? It's turning it into this sort of compound now. And so she was translating this as a, I forget what the page number is there. As people that are truly self-confident is the way she had it. Yan So here we've got yan, which means for a verb to be completed, right? That's why you say yan wane. Because you are you are ready, you are completed, you are done, right? Unless you're not, then you're <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you'll see it in other ones too. Uh, 
Another form is yach. You'll see yach right at the beginning, low tone, as opposed to yach, to be like something. So you might see yach, and that means to be completion. Like you could say, I, I worked on it, it's done. You might say, I ate it all, or I'm done eating. Right. And so it just means to do something to completion. The verb, so we've got to, which is, again, thematic. And there's this whole list of thematic prefixes which we'll learn, and which, uh, when we learn to use Crippen's handbook, a lot of the answers are there for us. So if we look at this little handbook, um, and it, he's updating this fairly often, which is super helpful. These are coming... <laughs> Page 18 is where you'll see a lot of these. So there's j, a, t, sh, 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 s, ch, g, t, da, ta, khu, khan, a, t, a, a, y, y, k, gin, ch, an, sh, ich, wak, a, khus, i, duk, sh, Everybody's favorite. And da it ta. And so these are ones that you'll see regularly in verbs. And what happens is they start popping up in this specific location. And there can be multiple ones in there. So you might see multiple ones in, in, in these different areas. Uh, and so and they just sort of, they start altering the verbs themselves. You'll see a lot of body parts and other things that are in there. And then, so here you've got tu, which is inside. Uh, it's usually a closed container. The W is indicating a perfective form, which means the verb is, has already happened. You've got the classifier, ya. Yeah. You've got the verb, ja. The verb itself, and so what you'll see is the verb has a root. That root has a meaning. You can start changing the classifier, changing the thematic prefixes, changing the pre-verb material, and that starts to alter the verb itself. The verb means to be fitting, right? To fit some occasion. And when you say to your job, that means something is reliable, right? Something is fitting for a task. And so, and then ah. Would be the ones, right? Like tubujaku ah, the ones who are reliable. Yan tubujaku ah the reliable people, the ones who are ready for it. Right. So these are these are just interesting ways that the language functions, and we'll sort of pull some of these apart now and then, just to take a look at them. I don't think I had any others. Oh, that's it. Thoughts, reactions. Is a kekha day yet? I knew that the combination is a curious class. Kekha day, if I didn't know the verb, I, or the conjugation, I just said. Kesha day verb, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if I was thinking of no way, I always knew that it was Kesha day. Yeah, Kesha day was no way. There's no way it's going to happen. There's no way it can happen. And usually it was the yet after the verb, but I couldn't tell you the verb. <laughs> right, I yeah. I knew that part of it, though. Kesha day put yeah. I can't sleep. Right. So there's different things, and so one of the things is you learn these basic patterns, and later in the semester we'll examine some of these patterns. Now it's probably time to just get into stories. And just let them exist. So let's uh, take a short break, like five minutes, and then we'll get into clink it. English just tangles our brains.
realize when you set your screen at you. I also have um, a preset one that you can use as like a screen saver kind of thing. I was like, I don't know how to get it. This was a while ago. That guy that I tutored yesterday, mm -hmm. he was telling me about. Um, I mentioned, well, my cousin, so I'll start there. My cousin, she, he started talking to these Bulgarian people who were visiting, I guess, his restaurant. And um, so they told him they wanted him to, like, try to speak Bulgarian. And they were really amazed at how well he could pick it up. And he said, well, it sounds a lot like Shenget. We have a lot of the same, it's a lot of the same sounds. And I thought that was pretty cool. So I told this the guy that I tutored yesterday, I told him about it, and he said that he just recently read an article that um, claims that the Shinget people are actually branched off of this Turkish tribe, <laughs> and that we look alike, and our languages are similar. But he yeah. said he was going to bring it. Huh? He said he was going to bring it. Awesome. I'll share it with a couple of Linguists would probably be hungry to destroy. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> but I mean, it's interesting to try. There's there's lots of theories too about where Tlingit comes from and Haida comes from. And people are always looking for connections. And, and I think it's neat because we do have we have languages, and at some point there's origins. Uh, but that's a really interesting theory that I was very Are we going to that? Zach thing tonight, or no? What's that? Like the, I guess, Evie and Egan, Albert Kupesh talking. Oh, that's right. I don't know, I just don't know what to pick up. What are they doing? Just that's Egan. what they're doing. <laughs> is, that, yeah. is that 7.30? It's Who's dancing? Seven? I mean, who's <laughs> dancing? What's going on? Like, uh, people uh, the Albert Kupesh is migrating over here. Yeah. 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 Oh, really? There are all these like, noises. That's good. Yeah, I don't think we can go. It's an hour and a half of class. We might try and get them. We're having an exit class next semester. Try and get them. Oh. Uh, What's that? Oh, it's just the biography we're having. Right. You can facetious though. Recite some of your speeches. Are we going <laughs> to read 50 Miles from Tomorrow? That is called William Hensley's book because he be? talks about it. It's good. Well, I haven't finished reading it, and it would give me a good reason. To. <laughs> right now we've got Mitchell's book. I guess we should put that on the list because we've got Mitchell's book, and we've got. No, I thought I was going to do it. I just think about it like a minute ago. <laughs> um, That's actually good. I have a girlfriend who said that comment because he doesn't really give any credit. And so. Right, and then I think we're going to read Mitchell's book. David Case's book, at least parts of it. And then uh, the book that Kathy Rudney did with Peter Metcalf. So, a little book. And then maybe a few miles from home. My friend Aaron Leggett, he's denying that he did a book on Inksa too. Yes. He did a pretty intensive study on really? it. Yeah, he graduated from Yale. Well, I guess it was part of his project. Well, I can't remember. This was due yesterday, or today. He's going to start hounding me, so I get a. Well, um, more near future talk. Uh, Liz Medicine Crow is going to be here next Friday on campus. Oh, she should come to class. She's, she's a philanthropist, and she's going to philanthropist. Do you know? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a philanthropist. I don't know. Coming in through SHA. Yeah, we have power on now. She makes a lot of noise. Yeah, I'm 
gonna buy a bread maker. How about that? <laughs> This is what you do on your breaks, I reckon. <laughs> that was like such a matrix move. <laughs> well, I didn't even mean to. I didn't <laughs> realize I was going to be go in, going in front of it, and then I was like, all right, I'm just going to go for it. Totally missed it, but it's not perfection. felt like a jerk. Disrupting class. I was trying not to disrupt class, and I was like, what? whatever. <laughs> We are actually we covered it when we talked about the syllabus in my book club. Yes, <laughs> yes, we are. Yeah, she knows all about it. And don't, don't worry. It's um, yeah, we are. There's Thor movie. Do you know the movie? I have my syllabus. I can tell you. I haven't Wait, like, memorized is that them. In that last thing, yeah. Why? I should just take my class so I know what's going on. Like, even though I already have credit for the class. Uh, it's a different title though, so you'll get double credit. Really? Yeah. Is they're not required to go to this year, but they're good movies. Survival Prayer is a Haida movie. That's November fifth. November twelfth is twelfth is We Were Children. It's about residential schools. November 19th is People of a Feather and Last Days of Shishma, which is, it talks about global climate change and Ida ducks and the people. And then The Last Days of Shishma is about the, the village. I think I saw that a long time ago. And then December 3rd is Skins, which will make you cry. Were you asking me if there was going to be one? Oh, yeah, I knew that. <laughs> I thought you were asking if we are doing something, like, related. I was like, uh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Figure it out You're yourself. I'm losing steam. <laughs> Ed, maybe you first. Now we're going to crank it beatboxing. <laughs> How to clink your rap comes over? <laughs> I, can't, I don't even know if it would be possible to. I can't even rap in English. And you could rhyme. You certainly have to find some different subject matter. <laughs> It'd be hard. Geesh, I'm gonna cheesh. Geesh, geesh, cheesh. Geesh. You didn't list uh, beatboxing as your talent for Alaska Pella. Who's ah, clink it. Gosh, Kuku.
Why didn't you? Because I didn't know I could until <laughs> a couple <Just> days ago. <laughs> Not today. You can do it tomorrow. Make yourself look more impressive. Okay. okay. <laughs> you good? Straight. I'm super straight. That's adorable. It's a big day. Big day. Today's a big day, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I'm not ready, though. I'm not ready for the big day. I always text to people whenever there's anything important going on. Okay, so you guys are Right. I watch SpongeBob every day after school. I'm just going to admit that. Now you guys know everything about me. True. Moving on. <laughs> Best friends. So let's just do a quick. Uh, reflection. Uh, you're new to the class, so maybe let's just say who we are, where we're at with. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Malaysia Moala. Uh, my senior name is Antikua. Um, Antikua. I took beginning, I think, in 2004. I think the last, like, Business intermediate, or whatever, like that in 2006, and then um, moved away for a while, then came back, and then had some classes with Alice, and kind of have been working with transcribing different stories. So, nice. So, I guess that's where I'm at right now. Okay, okay. Um, Jessica? Uh, We're saying who we are and where we're at with language. Oh, um, Ashley, uh, Rich Anderson. I just uh, intermediate, taking intermediate from the bunch of last year's beginning. Was really pleased with it. Um, feel good about nouns. Um, wanting to learn verbs, how they get put together. Um, you know, it's just a, I'm finding it to be very interesting. The hardest part I'm finding now is going to school and trying to separate my studies from really trying to learn the language because mm -hmm. my mind is so full of so many things. I'd like to just devote my time just specifically to language and not be distracted. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's probably my biggest frustration. But I just really like learning. Right. It's great. Okay. Okay. Uh, Hassan I heard it a lot growing up in my grandmother's house, mm -hmm. and all her friends were speakers, and so we always heard it. They're always laughing, having fun, on the telephone. So it was, it was a good thing, and uh, I've since first took a class with Kayotne Anchorage, huh. 19... 1980, uh, maybe 19, late 70s, when, when Dick was still chasing her. <laughs> 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 we had fun. It was cooking at Native Association. She was teaching us basic introductions. And uh, I've since taken classes from Dukey, Akasha, mm -hmm. uh, Anayotir, uh, 
Anki Shaul. Anki Shaul. But I, I was just there to take it in. Mm. So I could listen to the speakers and catch what I could because they were over my head for the most part. Mm. But I now can see that I caught some stuff. Yeah, you retained a lot. Okay. Just having fun. Sheesh. Well, you can write it on the board for us. Oh, well, I can. I can. No. <laughs> hey. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Do you know how to spell? What was your name again? Um, Aunt Kua. Aunt Kua. Aunt A N T space. Kua. Check out the two right here. T U dot R. No, wait, wait. Say it again. Aunt Kua. Aunt Kua. Aunt Kua. Uh. K, I don't know if it's K-O-O -O or K-U. Antuku Aunt. Yeah. Yeah. Tonga. Juntin. Juti. 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 I heard. Kanaka. Kasana. Kasana. Kanaka. Ah. Then you forgot to stop. Again. Would would Tone again. I did the same thing. Guys, you're not. It's too flat. Ha, a yow. Okay, it's for her. My name, English name is Heather. My clique nickname is Ida. I don't have a real name because I'm not a real person. I don't mean to laugh. Inshallah. Um, uh, this is my fourth year in Alaska and my third year in Clinket, so I didn't grow up around Clinket or anything like that. So I'm like struggling to catch up. Um, I don't really feel like I know too much Clinket. I feel like I'm kind of like waiting and lost, kind of like in my life. So, <laughs> um, but I'm trying. So yeah. yeah. Stephanie. Um, and I'm in my third year of Clinket at UAS, and I'm taking it with Marsha this year. And I took a little bit in high school with Jessica Chester, but not much. And so I've been doing a few years here, rocking out. Going to learn some Clinket beatboxing. Welcome okay. to join. <laughs>
Um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> I've been here in Juno for almost five years, almost five years, and I've been studying Tlingit here for almost five years as well. So I came here to study Tlingit. Um, before that, I'll tell you this story of how come I wanted to learn it so bad after I was, we were here for celebration and I was walking behind these three ladies, older ladies, and um, they were really talking to each other in Tlingit and I was amazed because I'd never heard so much before in my life and then all of a sudden the, one of the ladies, she like gasped and she was like, that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what did she say? What's going on? And I, I was like, I was, I felt so proud to be immersed in the language. I was eavesdropping, and then that happened, and I was like, oh my god. And I was like, I need to know what they said. Of course, I forgot, but um, yeah. So <laughs> that's that really, that's really what pushed me. I started studying it at home on my own, and it wasn't very successful because. I don't know. I don't know why that doesn't work out so well for me. Have you seen that person since then? I don't remember what they look like. Oh, okay. I don't know who they were. So you were Someday. My inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. Um, Next celebration. So here I am. I probably, I guess my my subconscious goal is to learn how to talk like those ladies. <laughs> with my best friend here. Uh, gossip. Quick, quick yeah, gossip. We're, trying to, we're trying to learn how to gossip. Quick comebacks. So. <laughs> yeah, quick so that I don't have to go through all those dictionaries and like try to piece it together. <laughs> I have this. I got this. <laughs> yeah, so I'm trying to... I'm trying to be funny and chingit, I guess. Uh, That's my goal. Super sarcastic, always. <laughs> you know, just trying to be myself. I'm tempted to just like go into like all my clan history now. Just like, oh, good dog. you I grew up down south. I just moved up here last summer. Started taking <coughs> do, uh, one year of Clinket, starting on my second year of intermediate now. Um, none of my grandparents uh, spoke Clinket. Their parents did, and they wouldn't. They made that decision not to teach them. Um, but I did grow up hearing. Phrases like Mata de, like Ishan, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, I got in my Liga class in my third semester with these guys. And it's been really interesting. Which the cut telephone car internet quantum again. Can you hear us? Or can we hear you? Ah. Uh, okay. uh, I'm a Yaudati, a uh, common use name, not not given yet. <laughs> I have suspicions though. Suspicions. <laughs> Uh, this is my second year now. I still feel like a rank beginner, and I still go home with a headache on really hard days in Clinket class, but it's all worth it in the end. Okay. Also, I hear a stapler in my ear, so whoever's sitting next to that speaker, could you staple on the other side of it? Oh. <laughs> oh, there was something clunking, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. oh. Sheesh. Uh. <laughs> Yes, we have microphones right, and it's probably me. I don't know what else to do. She's quite What else you get? Ah, uh, sorry, I've had this on mute. I've been trying to figure out how to get my voice through. As you saw earlier, me and Dave Hoon were sitting here making sign language. Okay, ha. Ah, the kisses you were blowing. 
<laughs> you got the drift of it, huh? Uh -huh. I'm actually sitting here in my house. Just so you know, I'm going to have to mute it really quick. I have a whole house full. Um, wow. Just a real quick, quick uh, to let you know. Oh, to let you know what's going on here. Um, my grandma Deborah is in Sitka, so we're getting ready to have all of my family here to discuss how things are going to go. So my house is going to be filling up very quickly with probably 50 chukin sha. Oh, okay. So I'm here, but I have a house full, and I just wanted to uh, let you know that I'm I'm here. So I'm going to mute it, and I'm going to be here this whole time, so I'll be typing and everything, but I just didn't want to have a lot of feedback and a lot of, so <laughs> a lot of sound. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so we're gonna do a story. We'll probably take turns reading. I might read the whole thing first. We'll see. It depends which one we pick. And then, uh, so it's up to you. We'll probably wait till next time to call on you for reading. If you're okay with it. And if there's anything you miss, the class ends up being stored on YouTube, so you can always come back to it. I can I can read if I if you give me the opportunity as you're going through the class just let me know and I'll be sure and and have everybody go in the other room but my house is kind of a it's a little bit of a trampoline right now and a little bit of a a running course so you'll hear a little bear cubs running through but I'd like to read okay and do you have the Nyman text no I don't I didn't know that's what we were looking at <laughs> I have every other book known to man sitting with me. <laughs> right. So uh, if you need, if you need me to, because they have them here at the bookstore. I don't know if they have them over there. I so, haven't even checked to tell you the truth. Yeah, it's Elizabeth Nyman and Jeff Lear. That's one we just read for this one, the first uh, 90 pages of it. It was a pretty okay. epic, epic week. Uh, we did the first three stories in Hashuka last week. Or just yep. sort of figuring out the rhythm of the class. Uh, and so this might be one that you just sort of listen along and then get the text. Uh, and then we'll come back to this one later in the semester. Next week we're doing Hatu Naku Yis. I have that one here right now. Hatu okay. Naku Yis. And uh, you're coming through very clear. It's very good. All right. What pages are we reading in the next one for next week? Did they answer the question? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Next week? Pages. Oh, 155 <laughs> to 213. 155 to 213. Hatu nagu yis yo kutach aya achtuasaku yidetu. Ya naski ash kashni kajivu ya sede ya khedakh kuziti at kushagavu aku yenye di dach kashni hat sit kuna kiyi dach kashni ya kasa yi tuwasaku yi dat utu de tubu wush utu de tubu Dark uh, a Ako yeni di Dutch Kashmir. Sit kunapayi Dutch Kashmir. Dakasas was a good one. I only voted for the person because it's shorter. I do want to read a lot. Sit, sit, 
Yaudity, Daka Sat to us, Saku. A Which one do you want? <laughs> I can't see the choices. Ah. Tekachina, <laughs> <laughs> Battle of the Giants. History of the Takuyanyedi, Story of Glacier Bidding Bay. Mm. Battle of the Giants. Keiki wa ento a. Ah. Which one do you want? I can't see it either. Okay. Battle of the Giants, History of Takuyanyedi, or Story of Glacier Bidding Bay. Story of Glacier Bay. Glacier Bidding Bay, different, different bay. Oh, I thought you said the story of Glacier Bay. I was like, Glah, of course yeah, I want well, Glacier Bay. Hey, she, uh, you, uh, Kunak Bukewe, Shkashniki, Chudehi, Akhoa. Um, say it again to me. Say what the choices were again. Kudziti at Kusagawu, Battle of the Giants. Taku Yanyedi Dutch Kashnik, the history of the Taku Yanyedi, Sit Kunakayi Dutch Kashnik, the story of Glacier Bidding Bay. The story of Glacier Bidding Bay. Okay. But unfortunately, the, the Giants had already won it. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to make people feel like they have options. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, all three of these are just yeah. amazing. When you get to the end, uh, well, well, I'll just read the end part for sure of the history and history of the Taku Yanyiti. Ha ye away kutusti yin. Ye away daya dayaha ka. Kiti ku a away we kesha yaha kah a kushiti ha. This is how we used to live. But this is what I'm saying. But it's hard to understand when it's not written down accurately. And uh, the story of Glacier Bidding Bay had so many good parts. Uh, there's some really neat there. sentences I want to pull out of here. Uh, one example would be page 50. Right, let's start with page 44. Line 54. Yeah, sit, sit kuna You have been invited. To glacier bidding bay, sit kuna, commanding the glacier. Next, really good. I mean, there's tons of good ones. These are just the ones I was highlighting. And we'll have a chance to just sort of talk about them all, but I do want to read one of them all the way through. Page 48, line 154. Ya has the children are going to starve. Page 50. I'm 174. Tess Ushigayi Janwu away, just 
with a yetkir is away. It's not a big goat. It's just for the children's mouth. It's for them to eat. Es is a contraction of e, yes, es for the mouth. I don't think I don't think so, but it's a good question. It's a long. Uh, but probably not because it has the pinch on the S. It's a long. But it, it probably has to do with the mouth or something. Uh, page sixty. Line three nine. Kadain a da you a kushain. A way clay out you were knock clay a ye. Clay clay yard day a way a gin a gawagwash. A way a at Senat ku a. He exer after he had examined it closely, he let it go like that. And she slapped his hand away. My aunt said not. Page 62, line 410. Game warden ha adugu ha adachas outlet. The game wardens have taken our furs away from where we left them. 434. <laughs> Truly, they left nothing for us. We are going to lose a great deal. 64, line 461. I always took up the rear. I was always following. 480. He atuch Wish Nidlin Kasai Jagudaks away a shunche art. Besides, she was fat. Sweat was streaming down her face. It says sweat extended in streams from somewhere. <laughs> Page sixty eight. I'm five thirty five. Das away, das a day sin. What is it you have hidden there? 541. Then we started off through the avalanched snow. Clay. Ah is a contraction of ah. When from it, kunaye begin. Tuwa at. We walked, glate eti, the rem the remains of the snow. Like eti is such a neat word. We see it all the time. Us eti, the footprint. Gun eti, the place where the fire was. Sit eti, the remains of the glacier, glacier bay. Hastu uh, eti, kah hasati. We are the ones that remain in their place. We're the descendants of them. E.T. It's what remains afterwards. Um, you go back a page. Mm -hmm. One thing I remember reading here was you go to 525, mm -hmm. the third line down, it says, uh, well, in English it says, and when I pulled on it, the whole thing seemed to stretch and turn white. It was fibrous like cotton, so I put a piece on the rock. Well, right above it, it said they hurled it onto a large rock that broke into smithereens, white powder, it wouldn't fracture. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking they found a bed of asbestos, because that's what asbestos does. Yeah, that's it what stretches, the it's a rock, sounds. you can break it, pound it, it'll turn white, but yet it'll, it's very pliable. Huh. And that, that's what I think, I'm thinking, okay, where exactly is this place? Right, because they also found they gold up there, too. Well, well, I first thought they were talking about gold, but then they said when it turned white, and then it, it was still pliable. Yeah, so, and she kept a little piece of it. Because I know in Canada they got big fields of asbestos. Huh. Really? But I don't know about this area. Yeah, it says there was a vein of it. it yeah. In between mm -hmm. these well, yeah, it's very, I wasn't sure how to interpret that. Hmm. So, anyway. 
page 70, very top. Sisyukh ay sa atikik, nukti se ka away, kukhas akhs. Ha at khay away dli, kukch away shukfakhi. Don't speak now. I'm listening for grouse calls. Our food is almost gone. We will soon run out of jerky. Glee, hook, jerky, dried meat. Uh, page 74, line 696. Zanti jaji yik I'm going to make flounder snowshoes. Uh, 76, line 717. We were too light. We weren't going to sink into the snow. There's no way we would sink into it. Uh, line... 741. Bones they saved for the dogs who ate them to get the strength to go on. There's quite a few others I mark. We will just move towards. <laughs> Page 86, nine, line 947. <laughs> Cut a sling yeti away ye has ya tea. Kesh has to eat ye gah ye she. They have come up here to the inland. They have come inland. There is nothing more you can do to them. I am the chief. They are my people. You can't touch them now. Uh, really neat things going on here. Ach sling those are my humans. I've never seen the possessed form of Shinget before. I thought that was really powerful when I read that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yep. Battle of the Giants. So what I'd like to try for this first go round is uh, cover up the English. I'll just read this whole thing straight through, and then we'll come back and we'll read it line by line. We'll take turns. You guys will have a chance to read and send it. But for now, cover up the English, keep it covering. Play wave, which kicker away at Hasta T in you ah. Ya do ah wave, cut to set. Ya do ah wave, what's the A? A away clay wooch to get husk out the at. Take a thing which in has the tea in. A was a ya has at kawa ak. Cake a wooch a yak. Aku as giant. Could the tea ye at ye has a ya sak. A away clay cha yak ude away to take kudude ha. Kesu was a o tea in you ah ya shark. Chute dad yak sadakati. Are you has put the gawu away you? A jawe you dakati. A who are away you? You we sha are away. Cut a yak nak sati yat aku. You away which has daya daka. Kak de yan hak honuk. Kesa de ah kuna ye ku wanu ku ye. Kay ye ya waka. Kay we kah sakahtu ek. Ah yu kat hunk away. A shukat ku ah. A wooch has kadahit. Ha. Chute kat has 
Well, it could be you, you know. We do take a chuku, we eat chawe, ye yeti, we skatuts etsk, sha, sha away, ye yeti. Ah, away. We wants as a atku, atsku. We wants as a ku are away play to tune atbuti. Huku are. Kesha <laughs> Away a hun a ye ye tess. Oh, two guna ya tea ye duck. Do ye day at cook or he? Tay ye away a yah killed it. Will the tread way shah. Tay ye away ya tea. Tay ye kinde. Tay ya what's up? Yard away to play. You dog over no go ye yah ye tea. Away yard, away a cave will good to you. Tay you. Tay way dark over no go ye yah ye tea ye ye. Tay a day yaga good awaits are you, you are tay. Way yin day away tuch out ye rain. Tay way yak tess to team. Ha was a yard days cook day cook quite a good. 
Ah, uh, uh, how he gonna come back? He could make it, all right. Ah, ach away ach kuchu di gut. Du kudatsi tu kusheye kusheye ye aya u we set a kusatan we we kate di kuti. The key are you nasi you the key on your aduti at kiskwan kapt. Cut Hist Kestiat <laughs> Right, so let's go, uh, what I'd like you guys to do is just to try to read one sentence, read up to a period. Uh, don't worry about the English. We'll just do the clink it. When we get to the little section break, though, we'll read the English part and then make any marks by any clink it parts that you might want to talk about. And I know it's hard. It's hard whether it's written coastal or inland. So we're just going to try. If I hear something that might need um, a little bit of adjusting, I might just read it back to you. And if you if you feeling nervous, you can take a pass this time, maybe. Anybody want to start? Okay. And uh, try and read loud. I know that some of us have small voices, but we'll pretend that there's a river running right in between us. Just so pretend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Octatsin, can you just be the river for <laughs> the next forty-five minutes? Kudzati ye at kushikawu. Clare way wuch kika away at hastatiyin you are. Yadu away shkuda sets. Yadu away what's at say. What's a? Cut it. It's cut you. Could I set? Oh, could I? Yeah, thank you. Could it? It's good. Okay. Now we're just going to go round and round. Oh, wait. Okay, watch. Okay. To gate. gate. When it has a hat, it's long and high. <laughs> to gate. Has. How to be at. Gate. 
که دل روش این هست دکیم چاو چاوا سیا هستد کاوا آق چاو روش خیخ Uh, uh, Yao did tea. Do you have the book? You want to try reading? My husband took his my backpack with him to class tonight, so I don't have my book. Okay. <laughs> Can you just listen and follow along later. Yeah. Six o'clock class. On to go out. Um, Taka or pa? Okay. Okay. Kuzi TV at you. Ye has a yaw sa. A yasak. A yasak. They used to be situated. Oh, the Battle of the Giants. They used to be situated opposite each other, they say. On this side was Kutitsaitsk. And on this side, what's at A? Then they insulted each other. Before that, they had gotten along well together, agreeing on everything they proposed to do. They were giants. They are called. Yes, <laughs> Have you seen how long that sentence was before you read? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Like, I looked down and I was like, oh, man. It's that period. At the hit. At the hit. At the hit. 
Oh, is it long? Oh, it is long. At the heat. At the heat. At the heat. Is that the exchange they're having? Yeah. Is that the provoking? Yeah. One of the tea. At the way, they call enough repetitive forms, I yeah. A way suffix ayya. And they're going to get these, you need double K's and double T's. The type of uh, suffix it takes, like they were, they kept doing it, right? They just kept doing this. And we're going to see, we see repetitive forms here. We see it in has se kakuch. There's a different type of repetitive form. And then we see it in has etach. So sometimes it's the CH. Sometimes it's a T, sometimes it's a K, and it's determined by the conjugation prefix. Uh, so if we look in the... And it depends on what type of repetitive motion it is as well. Uh, let's flip through on page 26 of the Dictionary of Clinkett. There's a nice little table there that talks about these repetitive, imperfective forms for non-motion verbs. And so what we have is, uh, Share the screen real quick. So this is what we're talking about here. We have four conjugation prefixes. Every verb has one. And eventually, as you get comfortable with verbs, you have to remember what the conjugation prefix is. Because the conjugation prefix and the stem shape is what determines stem variation. Short and high, long and high long and low in specific forms. The other thing is for some of these repetitive forms, there, there might be a preverb that pops up, and then, you know, that's why you get you do a sop. Ye is also, it interchanges with that. And also what happens in certain repetitive forms is the conjugation prefix itself pops up. Uh, and so it's not all the time, but then you're going to see it. So you'll see these different forms. Kechatinch, ye andaganch, you ayatunk, and asir. And so what you're seeing here is different repetitive forms popping up, and the conjugation prefix is revealing itself. And so for fluent speakers, they just know what type it, it takes. And it's really interesting to see how much information gets logged in a fluent speaker's brain about verbs, because we have to just sort of piece these some of these rules out and figure it. That's why you're getting the t, -t in there. Uh, it's not up there, but it's a different type of repetitive. I've never seen it before. Yeah, and then you'll get a double K as well. It's a lot of fun. Then suddenly they got into a fight. These mountains used to be fine. They were nice and neat. Oh, I'm trying to fix my screen. Oh, it's gone. OK, we'll just take the screen. Backwards on my mind. I don't know if you guys see a backwards screen. I don't know what you guys see right now. What was this roll? Then suddenly they got into a fight. These mountains used to be fine. They were nice and neat. But when those giants fought, they rolled over them. So some of them are squashed in places like that. And like that, those mountains. Then the taku should belong to me, each said to the other. No, I'm already sitting here. I'm not about to move off, Kutitz Et said. It was, it was the one who was about who was to be decapitated, who was speaking. First they would provoke each other, then they would forget about it, and then they would start up on it again, provoking each other. 
The war, no need, the way you say, boost us up. This one this one They are with shut way what pass eh? away who shut you up. Clay Kuna Clay Ya Shahid Clay Ya 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 Clay Ah 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 Sani ah, ask a son, ah, you cause ah, one day they got into a fight over it. He grabbed him. What's a a grab? They say. Then he broke his head off right there. He decapitated him. He threw it across the river, saying. Let it become Shkatitzetsky's head. So that that is how it is. There are little trees growing here and there on it. So when we see that downward marker, it means it looks like a tone mark that's going downward instead of up. It means it's long and low. So it would be ah k a ah, which would mean off of it. Okay. You do take could say it's take a kua taku take ich nachsiti. Do I keep going? Uh, yeah, it's the same time. Sure. Away clay way, ye nada clay ye clay yat ue chich. Say you ka te i yach ka yachet. Then he yanked his heart out because Kudetzetsk had tried to wrest the taku from him. As for his heart, he said, Let Kudetzetsk's heart become the heart of taku. The taku flows like this. It landed here. It looks like a human heart. Uh, Oh, 
Yad, Yach, 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 when one word when uh, one word ends with a vowel and the next one with the W, they just run into each other. Okay. And it becomes ow. Ow C R. Okay, go. Okay. Uh, Hiksha. Hiksha. Yeah. Yat away with a truch unach ke awahut. Play yat. 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 Play yat. Play ah. Nada. Nada. Ah. Nada. Play you. Yes, the windpipe he pulled down and then yanked it out. It became a small island that extends as far as over there. For some reason there are trees growing here. It is like a human shoulder, like this. Here he pulled the windpipe out, here, and water flows out there. Let ice water flow into the taku for everyone, for the clinket, they say. So what do you think? We don't even drink even a cup of it. It is so cold, that water. Okay. To play te away ye ye ti, to play solid rock away ye ye ti, you a canic. To play you the yin, the yin dock away ye what's it? Sick up. Yep, sick up. Yep, sick up. So a lot of times there'll be a verb and it might be ye before it or something. If the word ends with a vowel and the next verb starts with a K or an N, they just send up running together. Well, it could be, you know. <laughs> Way do. Say 
gay that he wear Judas days. Oh wait, did I go too far? Yeah, <laughs> might as well keep going. Man. <laughs> so, sha, sha away, yeah, you got to. So the screen that I share on the, uh, I don't know how it looks. Those of you who are online, is it is the screen backwards or is it just me? I think it's it's just you because I see everything normal. Okay. Okay to me. Okay. I see it backwards. That makes me a little crazy. Uh, can you read clink it backwards? Is there help? <laughs> so this is how this word functions. Uh, it's a place name and place names you get a lot of mashups together. K Shich E A. K is up. Chich is to run, ch is repeatedly, i is sort of a, sometimes it's a relative marker, sometimes it's just sort of a peg vowel because there's another noun coming after it. Uh, in this case, it's probably a relative marker showing that the, the verb is being nominalized, it's turning into kind of an adjective or something to do with naming a place. So if it's k, is a point. And that's where it is. You can't see it very well on the map, but it uh, runs up point. It's called Bishop Point by non clinket speaking people. Is this right? What's that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the line. The north line for the. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of craziness right there. Huh. So now you know what the call does for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always like super sly and trying to not let anyone know what they're doing. I told Nate Schwalber and he just say it on the radio. It's as encrypted as it gets. <laughs> Austin's um, papa, and I think it was. He was either um, Marvin or Clarence when they would go out fishing. They would only speak to each other in Shinget so that nobody knew what was going on. You still do that. You should ask Nice. All the Bristol Bay people. That's awesome. All right, where were we? In heaven. <laughs> we'll probably just finish this little section and we'll do something else. Uh, 
Now I've been asking them about it. Harry Carlick says he was he has walked across that small island and inspected the waterfall carefully, he says. It is nothing but rock. It is solid rock, he says. It starts from somewhere far below and is very thick, that rock. Well, it could be, you know, his windpipe. After all, Shkutitzet is a rock cliff, a mountain. It is a mountain. So what's at say too? What's at say? was upset by what happened. He said, I will locate across from Therefore, he is there. People that are truly self-confident will gain sustenance from my sides, he said. One time we went ashore there. Now my deceased husband was not daunted by anything. No matter what kind of place he had to go to to get it, he would keep on until he got what he was after. He climbed up that mountainside. It was steep like this. He followed the hillside upward. Here there was an outcropping. He came up to this place, like this, to the outcropping. When he had made his way down there, he said, he looked back down, and the boat was not visible. He could not, no one could see it. Now how am I going to get back? Now where he was climbing, there were seagull eggs lying here and there, seagull nests. He was gathering the seagull eggs from the nests. It looked to him like it would be too risky to go out onto that outcropping and walk about on it. How was he going to come back? He could make it all right, but he could see no way back. So he turned back there. I guess he had the sleeves of his shirt knotted together, and inside them he had those seagull legs slung around his neck. Up high. He was way up high. They used to speak to the mountain. Don't let anything bad happen to me, grandfather, they would say to it. And that mountain could understand human speech, too. So let's take a look in our last 15 minutes here. We'll do a race through. Uh, we've got the whole semester. You guys should really be thinking about what these stories are doing, how they're functioning as far as understanding where we are, what we're supposed to be doing, the types of language that's used in it, the way that grammar is functioning in it, the way it's translating. There's a lot of lines we could really take apart and see how they're functioning. Uh, and so we'll have time to talk about all of these things. Keep in mind you're expected to pick one of these stories or speeches or things that we're going over and looking at the translation and taking a close examination of how the language is functioning, how the story is functioning. It should be something that's of significant length. So if you decided to choose a speech, we'll look at a number of speeches from Kuih. Uh, so if you picked a speech that was very short, I would expect you to pick a couple more and maybe examine a few of them. So that if someone decides to do the story of Glacier Bidding Bay, which is very long and, actually, and very amazing, then the same amount of work will be going into these other things. So, uh, And we'll talk throughout the semester about what I expect. And next week we'll do a little bit of more listening and writing down what we're hearing and trying to figure out how to go from not just translated text back and forth, but also listening to someone tell us a story and clink it. Uh, maybe we'll listen to one the whole way through, and then we'll start going through and writing down what we're hearing. Uh, so I went through some of this uh, early on. This is a, uh, a series of learning videos that are going to pre be produced over the next year from the Gold Belt Heritage Foundation. Uh, I'm working with a number of uh, fluent speakers. This one I'm working with, Kehi Nauk, and uh, he's helping to figure out some of the examples. Uh, one of the things is we're looking at pronouns and we're really trying to figure out how pronouns function. There's an awful lot of them in Clinkit. There's really a whole bunch and eventually we'll, we'll get a feel for what all of these things are doing. 
The ones that are the exceptions are on the bottom with chush and whoosh. Those ones, they function, uh, they really modify other pronouns is what they end up doing. Chush means to the self. Whoosh means together, to, to each other. So there's a couple of things we're going to look at is how these function. We've got, uh, and yeah, you guys might want to rearrange if you can't see the screen over. It's hard to see the screen. Uh, you've got independent pronouns, and independent pronouns, they're not linked to anything grammatically. In Clinkit, these would be phrases like, here I am, this is me, that is you, it was him, right? And so those aren't verbs in Clinkit. And so those is, that's where those things might pop up. Or they might clarify something right before a verb. It, me, that is, that's how I was. Right, so that's, those are the first pronouns. And then we get into some sort of funky territory with some of these ones here. I know that these are a little bit small. Um, then we got possessive pronouns. And these ones have to do with either relationships as far as kinship terms, achta, yitla, dutla, or in terms of possession, achkuchidayi, ikuchidayi, dukuchidayi. And then they also will pop up in other certain verbs get conjugated using the possessive pronoun. Achtuwuya ke, ituwuya ke, dutuwuya ke. So when we conjugate that verb, as soon as we see the tu wu is in there, ach tu wu, then we know we just changed the ach, ach tu wasagu, yi tu wasagu, du tu wasagu. Right? And so those are the types of things that, that we start to learn and how to conjugate verbs. And those ones are some of the real easy ones to conjugate because it it because it's using a possessive pronoun, it's disconnected from the verb. And so it doesn't affect the verb. So the next category is object pronouns. And these ones, we just learned that it goes object, subject, verb. Object, subject, verb. And we just push that into our mind. And there's two types of object pronouns. There's ones that can cause some contraction and modify the verb itself. And there's ones that don't. So the object is interesting because some of them are what we call pre-verb. Some of them are prefix. And we just sort of start to learn the difference. Chat is, a, is an object pronoun. Cha is a connected object pronoun. So you say, you could say that. But you could also say, so usually when the verb itself starts with a D or a T, it might switch to the ha. Then you've got ha, yi, or ha, e, yi. And then there's we get into some interesting territory with the third person, which we'll get into in a moment. And then there's some other funky ones, which we're not going to get to yet, like ush um, and ah. So then we've got subject pronouns. Ha, tu, e, ye, a zero pronoun, and du. And we see those ones popping up inside of verbs. We're going to look at some examples of how these would change. So we're going to, we're going to fast forward through some of the other stuff. Uh, we're not going to deal too much with postpositional right now, but this means to go towards something. And they're most commonly used like, I'm going to tell you, um, it in, uh, and so we'll talk about those ones. They don't exist really in English, but there's certain verbs, uh, especially that have to do with something coming towards you or someone else, and you would use this. The other one is teaching, right? Or you know, hast du ich, hast du ich I taught them, right? And I'm teaching them. So if we can narrow it down to this smaller group that we can just sort of get to, you know, we've got to drill some of these so we remember them. Khat, uhan, wa eh, yuhan, hu, ah, ka, and at. I guess I should have had my little circles. And then the possessive, ah, ha, eh, yi, du. 
uh, ha, at. So one thing that we'll notice is all of the ones that are on the left, some of them, they have high tones in some part of the word. When we move into the possessive, that tone goes away. And it's going to be a pretty common pattern. So that will tell you right away what type of pronoun you might be looking at. So when we're talking about what these things are, on the left-hand side, you might see this little code, 1SG, 1PL. So that's first person singular, first person plural, second person singular, second person plural, third person human, third person non-human, independent human, independent non-human. So these, we're getting into some sort of funky categorization with pronouns. But singular is one, plural is more than one. First person is the speaker. Second person is the one being spoken to, uh, or you know that the verb is directly, you know, it's you, right? And we're talking about language, it's communication. So the speaker, the one being spoken to, and then third person is somebody being spoken about. The independent human just let, just sort of translates into it happens, right? It happens or things do it. I see us to have some mom in there, which is awesome. All right, so we walk through these first, second, third, independent. So if we look at how some of these pronouns function, here's some independent pronouns and some possessive pronouns. Gusu wa eh. So those are all sentences that are using independent pronouns. The first two are verbless. Those, those don't have any verbs. So if there's no verb, then it, odds are that there's going to be an independent pronoun. And then possessive. So then we've got i as in yours. Ahuni, my friend, do yadi, his or her child, and then ahtu yadi. So as we go moving between the object and the subject pronouns, uh, and these are another set that we've just got to learn how to use. And so instead of going through all of these one by one, um, you know, so here's an example of the object versus the subject. He or she or it is watching us. We are watching him or her. And so we're going to look at a, some examples of how these uh, would function. We're going to skip ahead a little bit. No time for subject and object. No time for this. <laughs> this, this, is, you know, this is my philosophy of how clinket verbs work, and it's based on working with the Downhowers and, and studying the work of Jeff Lear and working with uh, James Crippen and Carrie Eggleston. And it's really about seeing how verbs function. But what I want to, we only got five minutes left. We'll come back to some of this stuff. But what I want to look at is, say you look in the dictionary and you, and you look up a verb, teen. That's your verb root. It has to do with seeing, right? And so a root has a meaning. Teen. And that meaning gets altered by changing the classifier and the things that come before the verb, the pre-verb material. So when you look in the dictionary, what you see is it tells you what the verb root is. So when you see a, a sentence like, the verb is teen. And we just learn to spot these roots so that we can look them up. The other thing it gives us is it shows us this theme. And we'll talk about this theme. Um, maybe that's what we'll do in these next five minutes, is we'll just walk through this part. So that theme is really giving you the code of how to conjugate the verb. Now, the one thing is, in the Edwards Dictionary, the conjugation prefix is placed right here. It would say zero at. But I think in the future, when we document verbs, we should put it where it would go. The conjugation prefix goes in between the object and the subject. And if you look up a verb and there's no O, that means it doesn't have an object. If there's no S, it doesn't have a subject. And then, you know, this is 
will get to those types of verbs. And then this is telling you what the classifier group is. It's in the L classifier group. And then this is the root. This is telling you stem variation. We're not going to worry about that right now. Underneath it, it's giving you, let's just, I think I do this. So there's the root. Um, so when we talk about roots, teen, teen, or tin. Da could be da, 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 or dane. Right, so there's ones with A's or O's or double O's which can change their shape in certain forms. And so we just learn that. And the thing that we remember is we've got vowels that come in sets. Low tone, high tone, short, and long. And when we're dealing with verbs, these are sort of three sets. You don't have low and short. You generally don't have that. You have high and short, low and long, high and long. So this is the this is giving us this sort of coded information so that we can learn how to conjugate this verb. And as a learner, you just sort of you understand this, and then you just give it a shot, and you start piecing these things together. And then eventually, you don't have to think necessarily about going from formula to conjugation, but you just start learning how to use them. But I think at first, you've got to start looking at it in this method. And we'll talk about all these individual parts. If we run out of time, we'll just finish this next week. So here's our, here's our code. Right? It's kind of intimidating to look at. Uh, there's a database now. If you go to crinkit.info slash verbs, you can download uh, a whole database, a spreadsheet. There's lists of these different verbs that are coded like this. So the O is the object. It's the thing that's impacted by the verb, and it's not the subject. So if there's two things in a verb, and, and Clinkit prefers to use pronouns and kick the specific information outside of the verb itself. The conjugation prefix. Every Clinkit verb has one, but it only shows up in certain forms, and it affects the way that verb takes shape. So we've got n, g, g, and zero. And we just keep in mind what type of verb it is. When we learn a verb, we have to remember, oh, that's zero conjugation. OK, OK. It'll pop up in command forms, uh, certain repetitive forms, uh, and, and there's a few other forms that it pops up in. S is the subject. It's the, the agent of the verb, the one who's doing the action. The classifier, it combines with the verb root to create the meaning of the verb. It belongs to one of these four groups. And then it moves back and forth depending on how the verb is functioning. There are a couple that might jump. There's a couple that jump from zero, like yuck a, kesh ushk a. It jumps down uh, for some reason. But most of them, they don't. They would just slide along. And you learn, as you learn how to conjugate verbs, and what we'll look at throughout the semester, is some sort of formulas. You know, the future form is always going to be minus i. The perfected form is going to be plus i. And then there's a few, you know, so we learn these different things along with some other things. And then there's also voice uh, plus d and minus d, which have to do with uh, the subject sort of becoming impacted by the verb, what we call middle voice, or verbs that take an object, but they can move into a certain form where they won't take an object. And then we get to the root, which is the core of the verb. It contains the meaning, and it's altered by these other things. And what you'll see is sometimes there's a little uh, character that's in superscript, a little number one up above, or number two. And that means it's part of a set. There's, there, there are roots that sound exactly the same, but they actually have a different meaning, like T. There's, T as in to be a certain way, yati, siti, and then there's T as in to carry a compact object. And we're out of time. It's going to get to all these other cool, awesome things. That's probably not. Yeah, that's not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're on speeches next week. If you have specific things, if you have stories that you're you're heartbroken because we haven't had a chance to read. 
let me know, and I'll make sure that we, we get to them. Uh, also, if you have to bring questions, if you got questions. What were the pages again? Pages. 155 to 213. 215? 213. 215 to 213? Pages 155 to 213 in Hatubunaku, yes. Goodness, cheese. What were those pages again? Speaker jerk. Making fun of everyone. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. I, told oh, yeah. so <laughs> I didn't. I have my. Uh -huh.